Thalassophobia is the intense fear of the sea, and for many, the bobbit worm is the reason for it. These horrifying marine worms have razor-sharp jaws that can snap their prey in half like twigs before dragging them down into their hellish burrows. The bobbit worm is pure nightmare fuel. I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Bobbit worms are some of the most amazing, beautiful, and deadly bristle worms in the world. These danger noodles have been around for ages. The oldest bobbit worm dates back to 400. I don't know if you could call that a danger noodle because, like, danger noodle is like kind of cute, right? Like, it's like, oh, it's a danger noodle. It's kind of cute. These things are not cute. A million years ago and it was found in the Middle Devonian rocks of Ontario. Described in 2017, Websteroprion armstrongi was a jawsome beast that was about one meter long. These worms are ambush hunters, and from a distance, they look harmless. But if viable prey swims within range, the bobbit explodes out of its hole and catches it in the blink of an eye. Then, the prey is dragged down into the depths of hell, and never heard from again. The origin of their nickname might be an urban myth, but their mandibles cutting power is true. They're known to cut small fish in half, and stun larger prey just long enough to pull them into their mucus-lined burrows. <laughs> yeah, he whiffed the first time. Stun Look. larger prey just long enough Fuck. to pull them into their mucus-lined <laughs> burrows. He whiffed the burrows. first time, dude. Bobbit worms are mostly nocturnal predators, so they need to be able to sense prey in the dead of night without using their eyes. To do that, they have five antennae coated with sensory organs. Look at that shit, dude. Look at this. Five antennae coated with sensory organs that can detect chemicals and vibrations in the water. Once prey is detected, it's time to go on a chopping spree. When striking, a bobbit worm fires out of its hole at around six meters a second. Their mouth parts are hidden, but on their way up to their prey, they turn outwards like a finger in a glove. The mandible provides the cutting power, and the secondary Oh my god, it's like an alien thing. They don't have them, but then that comes out, so it's like a mouth within a mouth. ...serrated mouth parts, called maxillae, grasp the prey and bring it into the mouth. There are some claims that the mandible can inject a paralyzing toxin, but this hasn't been confirmed and research is ongoing. I wonder why it hasn't been confirmed. Nobody wants to test that shit, dude. But their head is not the only interesting thing about bobbits. Their bodies can be beautifully iridescent, and they're super long. Bobbits are just- That's what she said. Sorry, 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 sorry! It's about two and a half centimeters wide, but they can be up to three meters long. Their bodies are segmented, and each segment has bristles. As they grow, they add segments to their body. Look how big that fucking thing is. Dude, that is enormous! The current record holder for most segments was a Japanese bobbit with an amazing 673. Holy Having all those segments shit. can be helpful for two reasons. One, they can be ejected in case they get caught by a predator. And two, detached segments might still work as sexual organs. What? Bobbit worms have been observed breaking themselves into two or more parts when handled. Amazingly, sometimes more than one part can survive and regrow the missing parts. So, by splitting themselves, you get two short, genetically identical bobbit worms instead of a single long individual. The sexual aspect of their segment detachment hasn't been confirmed. Nobody knows quite how bobbit worms mate, but their closest relatives are all broadcast spawners. That means that the females eject unfertilized eggs and the males fertilize them. 
on some bristleworm species, possibly including the bobbit worm, as the animal becomes sexually mature, it grows gonads in its lower segments. The funky half. Gonads are in the funky half. When it's time to spawn, the lower segments separate and float towards the surface to meet other lower segments. So it's like a sperm balloon. You don't even meet who you're fucking. You just like eject your dick and your pussy and they float to the top. This is why you don't drink seawater. It's like a blind date for severed genitals. If you find this cornucopia of adaptations a no. bit too much, you don't have to worry about encountering these long boys. Most bobbits live on the ocean floor at depths of between 10 and 40 meters, so you're unlikely to meet one of them at the beach. But if you have a saltwater aquarium, you might accidentally bring a bobbit worm into your house. Bobbit worms sometimes hitch rides in ocean rocks or water used to fill saltwater aquaria. When they're young, they can survive eating coral or other organic matter. But when they get big, they start going for the fish. Something like this happened at the New Key Blue Reef Aquarium in England. The aquarium staff started finding mutilated dead fish in the morning. So they set traps overnight, but they would come back to find that these traps were destroyed. <laughs> The bobbit worm was like, fuck yo trap. <laughs> Holy shit. What a five head, dude. Uh, oh. See those legs? It's like a horror movie. I don't know how to see this guy without pissing him off. This led to a complete draining of the aquarium. After doing that, they found a 1.2 meter long bobbit worm, which they named Barry. Barry! Oh my god, dude, I'm freaking out. That's some tremor shit. Anybody see that movie? By then, <laughs> he had killed several fish, but was the most popular animal in the aquarium. So he was moved to his own enclosure and lived peacefully ever after. And this is our famous bobbit worm underwater sand waterfall amazing tank. I mean, the accommodations are nice. He's got a sand waterfall. He's a celebrity. Okay, okay. Um, the bobbit worm is over here. This is a very deep sand bed. <laughs> oh my God. He's got this massive tank, but where is he? He's in the corner in like a really small square. That's where he's at. And he never seems to go below two inches of the sand, but we gave it to him anyway. I think he likes the waterfall. The view is too nice up top. If you didn't know, I actually do all of the illustrations for Animal Logic. I'm a scientific illustrator, and I spend my days illustrating dinosaurs for the Royal Ontario Museum and my nights drawing animals for Animal Logic. If you've ever wanted to have some of my art to take home, well, now you can. You can find my first published art book on Is this an ad? Store. Is this an ad? It features 99 Oh, of it's an ad! For Animal Logic. Oh! From when we first started making this show to now. You can also take home my favorite I'll watch the ad. illustrations with a six pack of Animal Logic stickers. You know, those are pretty good. Those are really good. If you wanted to. Yo, look at this guy. There's no way this chameleon or lizard is not giving us the concern froze right now. What are these emotes? This is obviously Craigasm. This is Pepe Stare. This is Madge, probably. This is Bleppers. And this is Pipo Riga. Ready to blend in. To have something Animal Logic for your walls. I think you should go check out this really beautiful art poster by Conrado Salinas. I think you'll really like it. And there's more to come. Available art was for pretty pre order good. is a montage poster good. and a mug with a beautiful wraparound a design, mug? both featuring many of my original illustrations for Animal Logic. If you want to support the show and take home some of my favorite scientific 